ladies and gentlemen. I am delighted to be here with you this evening. And thanks to all of you in BITC Northern Ireland for the invitation, for a chance to share 12 minutes worth of ideas about where we are in this great journey towards a more sustainable world, and to celebrate, as Stephen has just suggested, the incredible achievements of those whose work you will see honored in a short period of time. I want to take you back just to start with to the beginning of this evening, to the Pond Park Primary School. Uh, some of you were still sitting down at the time, so you may not have quite heard every word of their song, and I won't repeat it to you this evening, but just recall what they were talking about, which is beginning to think ahead to the time when they will be grown up, a bit like you, as it were. And for me, with 2050 almost permanently in my mind, I couldn't stop myself thinking, how old will those kids be in 2050? This is a calculation I do practically everywhere I go at the moment. How old will someone be in 2050? And those kids will be 45. And probably they're finding it extremely difficult to imagine what the world will look like when they're 45 years old. Do you remember how hard you found it when you were their age to think about the world 35 years ahead? It's difficult. In fact, it's nigh on impossible. It's a relatively simple calculation for me because I will be 100 years old in 2050, which is remarkably simple to cope with in some respects because I'll be lucky to be alive. But if I am, I suspect I will still be banging on about the benefits of sustainability just as much as I do today. This time story is really important. We spend a lot of our lives in three different time zones, as you know, where we are today in the present, thinking back, sometimes with regret, to where we were in the past, and when we can, thinking ahead to the future and trying to work out what our role might be in shaping that future or just being in that future or, for many people, sadly, just surviving in that future. And the great thing about award schemes of this kind is just for a tiny period of time, it forces you out of the current time zone that we all tend to live too intensely in and takes you into this sense of you, us, your business, the community, into the future. I got rung up today by Tom Borden, a journalist on the Independent newspaper, and said, would I be keen to do an interview today to talk about the damage caused by pester power. I thought that's a really strange request for an interview. Pester power is when children, obviously, get to their parents and persuade them by dint of extraordinary skills in advocacy to do things about the environment they otherwise mightn't be minded to do. Now, for me, pester power has been quite a useful part of the total change process that's been going on over the last few decades. And I know for a fact that many leading business people today do what they do about the environment because they've been on the receiving end of a lot of pester power from their children. Now, to be honest, I'd love to live in a world where pester power wasn't needed to persuade adults and parents to do what they should be doing anyway. So I declined the invitation because I thought I'd probably be too rude. Not least, as I was thinking rather differently about this, I just finished off a review of a new book just out by the wonderful Nick Stern, Lord Stern. Some of you will remember that he was the first person to give a full account of the economics of climate change 10 years ago. He's just written a new book, which will attract people's attention because it has a wonderful title, which is Why Are We Waiting? And this is still the case. I know lots of you think we're really engaged on this story of achieving prosperity in a low-carbon world. Honestly, we're about 5% down the journey that we're going to have to do. At best, 5%. So yes, we're going to be thinking a lot tonight about how important the contribution from business is, that leadership contribution is, to helping create the conditions for prosperity in the future but you only have to just look at some of the stuff we're learning today about climate change to understand that we are really just at the beginning of a long and extraordinary journey. Nick Stern's book, which I wouldn't recommend 
incidentally, unless you're really up on econometrics and stuff like that, which I definitely wasn't, but skim through those chapters quite quickly, has three simple things to tell us. One, the science has got firmer. There's no debate about the science of climate change. Two, the risks have got greater. If we don't start acting very soon, the risks begin to accumulate. And three, the solutions in the intervening 10 years have got more and more exciting. And Nick Stern's book, as is the case with many other writers today, is such a pro-business, pro-enterprise, pro-prosperity book. It's all about what happens to our economies, our societies, if we seize hold of this challenge, not from the perspective of avoiding the apocalypse, but seize hold of the challenge in terms of creating new opportunities for people for the future. That's where the exciting bit really, really kicks in. So for me, this time zone stuff, when I think about Nick Stern, I think about that pattern of leadership, I can't help myself. When I get to hear about the award winners in a moment, because they'll be sh following shortly uh, after I've quit the stage, I'm thinking all the time about those people in the moment today, in the work they're doing, in their company, in their organization, and I'm thinking all the time about what that means for the future. These stories will come alive for us this evening, and I love the way that BITC here in Northern Ireland has focused on this notion of, of the story of people, of the individuals behind the collective efforts that we're going to hear about in a moment. And don't forget, we don't really get to see much of that on an occasion like this. We get the name of the company, occasionally we might get the name of a chief executive or somebody involved in it, but what we don't see is the stories of the people, the individuals that make these achievements possible. And of course, tonight we tend to go to the stuff that is brilliant and exciting and upbeat. We tend not to think that all these stories are as much about failure as they are about success. They're as much about bloody-mindedness and obstinacy as they are about imagination and glittering prizes. They're as much about frustration along the way as they are about elation. And I just want to remind you to celebrate that sense of what it is to be an individual in this moment of change in the organizations that we're going to hear about in a moment. It's been an amazing day for me, bracketed entirely by BITC. I started out in London this morning celebrating the launch of the sustainability report from Carillion, a company with which BITC has worked incredibly closely for a very long time. Wonderful company doing brilliant things. Biggest commitment to apprenticeships of any company in the UK. 5,000 apprenticeships to be created between now and 2020. The bit where Richard Housen, the chief executive, dropped his little statistical nuggets into the midst of this audience was, of course, quite special, because quietly he just reminded people, you know what, if there are still companies out there who are not doing this stuff, there's something wrong with their leadership. And the reason for that was, as he said, everything that Carillion has done last year around sustainability has contributed 27 million pounds to their profits. Not that big, but not bad. 27 million pounds is material by any standards. So that was a great start to the day. And I've ended with a really very special occasion for me, not just celebrating the leadership here in Northern Ireland from the business community, but giving me a chance with this 2050 story going on in my mind to think about what that leadership means for all of us in 2050, for all the people that you work with, for the communities that you support, for all of that social value that you add day in, day out to the betterment of society. And my last point is incredibly simple. This is really an unbelievable time to be alive as a business person, as an innovator. Writing the book about 2050 gave me license to try and understand what it is that isn't really working as well in the world as it should be, but also to understand what is working well. And trust me on this, because you can't challenge me because there's no Q&A tonight. We do not lack for technology. We have all the technology we need 
to get us to a sustainable world for 9, bi 9 billion people by 2050. We do not lack for capital. We have all the financing we need to get us to a sustainable world for 9 billion people by 2050. We do not lack for professional skills. Across the entire world, we've got people who are capable of building the infrastructure systems and networks which will deliver a sustainable world. And as we heard from Glenn earlier on, guess what? We don't lack for imagination. We have all these skills, talents, attributes, resources to such an extent that sometimes the despair about sustainability absolutely baffles me. So the things we do lack, and I'm conscious I'm treading into some slightly difficult territory here, perhaps the kind of consistency and political leadership we might need, perhaps the ability of the media to tell the stories that lie behind what we're about to hear tonight with sufficient purpose and imagination, those things are what we now all need to help make happen. And that's why I'm a sucker for award schemes like this, because they bring to life the extraordinary contribution that is now coming forward from people here in Northern Ireland and through BITC, an organization that I've come to love and respect, through the organization across the whole of the UK. And it is a wonderful, wonderful contribution that is being made to the life of people in the UK today. So thank you for inviting me. I've much enjoyed my short time with you. Thank you. Jonathan, thank you very much indeed. Food for thought about 2050.